Yes, Missy. If this is a repeat, I'm sorry. I've been kind of in and out. So I understand. It may have already been covered. Um, you, at the beginning of the message earlier today, you were talking about um, making the name, bringing shame upon the name, or you know, making the name nothing. I think is how you phrased it. Or and there profaning are profaning the name. Profaning them, yes. And that's that's actually what I was going to get to is that the commandment that says not to use the Lord, not to use His name in vain. Um, in some of the, I don't know. Okay, see, I'm saying something that I can't quote exactly where it was. I'm sorry. Um, but I know that there is a <clears throat> mindset in some of the Jewish community that that commandment actually means not to bring it low or not to make it mean nothing. And that's actually what the commandment is, is not to bring it low, not to make it mean nothing. And that's why some of them don't use the name. Are you asking me if that is correct or are you just yeah, making I'm, that statement? I, 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 just a thought on it. That's all it was just. Well, was, if I may just comment real quick. Please do. <laughs> I tend to agree. I tend to agree. Oh, that's all you had to say? Okay. So, because familiarity breeds contempt. Okay? So, when something that is supposed to be set apart is used very commonly in just any day and every day, typical conversation, what happens? It's not held in high esteem, right? So I, I tend to believe that. Now, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with us referring to him, you know, and if some people think it should be pronounced this way, fine. If you think it should be pronounced this way, fine. But I think that we always need to remember that we're talking about, you know, the sovereign of all things. My, my approach to this has been, or position, I, I respect people's convictions on this and people have to follow their own conscience in this regard. You know, I have a feeling that when we come into the kingdom, there's going to be a lot of things that we're going to realize we were way off on this, you know, and I'm, that goes for me too, you know, but where, when it comes to this, here's something that's always stuck with me. And I, I hope I don't fall out with anybody or nobody falls out with me about this, but this is just me. I knew my dad for 54 years before he passed. I never once called him by his first name. His friends did, but I called him father. I called him dad. So my thing is that I am at this point in my life and in my walk content to call him father, Abba, creator. Yes, well, I'll say God, I'll say Lord. I know that those are not names. Those are just English words that are titles and things like that. But when it comes to the name yod vav -Hey, I don't take a position on how that's to be pronounced because I simply don't know. I'm, right. I'm, I know that I hear this argument for this pronunciation. And I say, oh, that sounds convincing. And then I'll hear this argument. And I'm like, oh, that sounds pretty convincing too. But it leaves me of, I don't know. So here's, I'm just going to call you creator, father, almighty, Lord God, you know, these things, because I believe that you hear what's coming from my heart. So all that is to say, I, I tend to think that there might be some merit to that argument of what it means to take the name of Yudhe Vavhe in vain, to make it, to use it in such a common way that it doesn't mean anything anymore, you know. And, you know, if you, can, if you think about it, like, 100, 200 years ago, you know, going back over generations, um, the term, the title, the name, you know, however you want to phrase it, God, used to be a holy, it was a holy thing. It wasn't just thrown around flippantly. Yeah. And now today, because people have become desensitized, it's kind of like boiling a frog. I mean, you've heard that. I don't know if I'm the only one that uses that. <laughs> yeah. But they say the way you boil a frog is you put it in the cold water and then you turn on the burner because the frog won't jump out of the water. It'll warm up with the water until it just, you know, that's how you boil a frog. So I think that we've kind of done that in a lot of instances with a lot of different things in relation to the father. And to substantiate what you said as well, um, when they asked Yeshua how to pray, he said, pray like this. And he said, our father. Yeah. So, I, I, you know, I kind of lean on... If he didn't reach for the name at that point, him, I, I don't consider myself closer to him than he was. That's for sure. So, <laughs> Well, like I said, that's kind of how I approach it. Right. But I also, and I'm going to make this very clear, I, abs I absolutely understand that someone has a conviction 
you know, that oh, they, yeah. you Absolutely. know, about that. And I, I respect that. I honor that. And I don't, I don't, it doesn't trouble me. Yeah. It's just that, you know, I, this is kind of where I'm at with it. All right. But let's, let's address the bigger issue here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that is the, the, the frog in the boiling pot, how we have been desensitized to so many things. And this is going to connect to something I said at the very first of the message. And, and so this connects to how we approach him as well. You know, yes. Boldly approaching the throne of grace. You know, how, how do we translate it, that in our minds? Does that mean, well, he's my father and I'm just going to, hey, I need something. Or do we come before him humbly, respectfully, boldly, yes, with confidence, yes, but understanding that he is holy, that he is set apart. You know, he's, he's, he's not just somebody that, you know, I just approach him in any old way. There is a protocol, you know. And so how did that prayer go? Our Father which are in heaven, hallowed be, set apart is your name. Yes. You're right. We acknowledge that you are set apart. There is none beside you. There is none above you. You are set apart, right? You know, and, and the and the the concepts and the in the approach to how we pray, you know, is is reflecting that he is holy and that we should always keep that in the forefront of our our, our minds and our, and our conscious consciousness as it relates to how we come to him, you know. Um, I'll be the first one to admit that growing up in, in church and the kind of church I was brought up in, which I'm not disparaging. <laughs> we, we would tend to look at him more as daddy than king, than sovereign, than the almighty, than the creator. And I know that we can, by the spirit of adoption, call out Abba, Father. I'm not putting that down either. But we also need to be reminded that our Abba is the king. <laughs> you know, he Abba is the respect. sovereign. Yes. And even in, even in certain temporal situations, you know, if, if a son, you know, was the prince and his father was the king, you know, he didn't just walk into the king's court and say, hey, daddy-o, you know, what's shaking? You know, he would approach him not only as father, but as king, you know, and would respect, you know. Anyway, maybe I'm rambling on, but no, I, that's I, the I, issue to me as far as I'm a concerned. It's respect issue. Yeah, it is. It is. In Hebrew, it would be... Yura, which means awe. Respect, most of the time translated as fear. Mm 